Right, welcome back to the shop and happy new year. And let's get straight to it. I uh, have here a fairing from an aircraft with loads of cracks in it. Um, it's falling apart. And just a note, it's off one of our communist friends' aircraft. Just a little note. If you're thinking about, you know, doing stuff in your home shop to earn a bit of money and bits and pieces, I've been in aircraft maintenance for 30 years, but I'm not, I'm not the belt world's best welder. But people are gonna bring you stuff like this. And the thing to note here is that it's covered in crap and someone else has already had a go at it and they haven't been all that successful because there's great globules of weld. The other thing to note is that we don't know what the material is. We have no spec, no identification marks on it. And it's covered in probably a chromate alachrome substance. Uh, it's unlikely to be very nice especially as it came from our, our communist friends in the, uh, in the former Soviet Union. So we're gonna get all that off first and that, if you're, if you're you know, running your own shop, is gonna take time, because it's all oil under here. I'm gonna have to drill this bit off, which is riveted down. And the welding is not going to be the element that takes the time, the cleaning, the prep and the sorting out afterwards is going to be what takes the time and it's going to take several hours and there's going to be plenty of people out there say, well, you know, a little bit of weld, my mate up the road can do that in 10 minutes. Well, yeah, somebody's already tried that, it hadn't worked very well. So, um, we'll do some drilling, we'll get it a bit cleaner and we'll see what it sounds like. You see somebody didn't take this off to weld it before, it's all burnt on the end. Another thing to think about is that this, uh, this has been welded at manufacture, the Russians welded that, so it's probably a weldable alloy. This stiffener here is very likely not. If it was an American airplane, it would be 2024, maybe heat treated T3 or something like that. So when you heat this, you're gonna fuck it up. Um, so this will come off anyway. It'll give us better access, better cleaning. We can dress this flat, we can bead blast it. Let's see how it goes. Let's get back to it. So I was a shot of it from the outside and I have right ginger carefully started on it with a flap wheel. I'm not gonna try and I'm not gonna try and grind paint out of these low spots because all I'm gonna do is thin the metal on the high spots and that's, that's not what we want. So I'm going really carefully, just barely taking the paint off. Um, I've drilled off this bit. Um, some of these rivets have been smashed down and bludgeoned and there's a lot of extra thickness of weld here. I'm just gonna grind a bit of that off and then we'll clean the paint either side of this weld and we'll go to the blaster and we'll try and get some of that aladine, alachrome, nasty stuff off the inside because welding on that is gonna get in your lungs and kill you, and that's probably why you wanna, you know, you, you gotta charge enough for these jobs. It's not, it's not simple to do things properly. It takes time and a bit of effort and dedication. If you watch Keith Fenner, some of his stuff, you, you'll really appreciate that. Anyway, let's carry on. side of this crack is higher than the other it's out of line so I'm not going to keep grinding on that otherwise I'm just going to thin that side down. Well I think go to the bead blaster see if this paint comes off a bit easier you know 
in there because that will stress relieve it a bit and uh, knock the paint out of the low spot. Well, how well you can see in my cabinet here, yeah, but I'm just gonna get her as clean as we can. See what we're dealing with. A um, lot of cracks, a lot of stock drills. But at least we got something clean and we can dress it flat and I think take a little bit more of the thickness of this old weld out. Oh, we've got some porosity in there. Uh, we'll just give it a good acetone scrub and see. See if it'll weld. Well, we got it wiped down and cleaned up a bit and I've just dressed this area down kind of flat. I'm going to come in here with a grinder. Carefully, you can't see. There's no light in this place. The light in this place is so poor. I'm going to come in here with the grinder and just get that thing down. Uh, my last bit of cleaning the hair is going to be coming in with a stainless wire brush and giving it, giving it some glue to really like bust through any last bit of oxide film there. So we've uh, ground off the paint, bead blasted it, acetoned it, and now we're going with a stainless brush. Um, and my point uh, I was kind of making with these little jobs, you know, somebody will bring it to you and say it's a it's a quick job. You can be an hour into it before you really know what you've actually got. So beware. Let's uh, scrub it up and see if there's any chance of getting a few tacks on it. All right, well, it didn't go great, but it's gonna work. I've just tried to uh, right carefully build a sort of a bridge around these thin porous crack bits here. You can see how porous the old weld was where I've scrubbed at it there. The cleaning action of the arc just pulls out plumes of porosity and it turns to nothing. But we may be in with a chance once we get these holes filled in and dressed a bit down. It should be possible to just run along these cracks. Um, we may be in with a chance, we may not, and I'll have to bring you back another time. I've run out of time, I must go and uh, hope for some more interesting videos this year. We got uh, one of my work colleagues here is wanting to learn to TIG weld, so we'll bring you a little bit of that and hopefully get some arc shots. We've got a better camera coming. Good night, thanks for watching.